Hey, Soul Survivors. So I've decided to do a series on different mental illnesses, what they are, and also sometimes people get them confused with NPD. So we're going to discuss why that is. And this can help you understand yourself or understand the person that you're concerned about. And the reason that I want to do this is because narcissistic personality disorder can be extremely toxic with the lies, manipulation, but there are people who just have some struggles, whether it's depression, anxiety, ADHD, and we're going to get to the core of the person. Are they a good, genuine person? And how does their struggles, uh, can they be overcome? So let's get into it. So there are symptoms of ADHD. They fall into two main categories, inattention and hyperactivity, hyper uh, impulsivity. So it used to be just ADD or ADHD. You used to always think ADHD was like the hyper where kids are bouncing around and just can't sit still. And we're going to talk about like adult diagnoses and also in childhood. So in attention, uh, you got your difficulty sustaining attention in task or play activities, frequent careless mistakes in schoolwork, work or other activities. And often they don't seem to listen when they're spoken to directly. They fail to follow through on instructions, fail to finish the work or chores, the different duties in the workplace. And they also struggle with organizing uh, tasks and activities. They like to avoid or they can be reluctant in engaging in tasks that start to require sustained mental illness. It's exhausting for them. They got so much going on in their brain that when they are supposed to focus for a long time, it's difficult. And they often lose things. Um, they're easily distracted by extraneous stimuli, forgetful in daily activities. So the hyper activity and impulsivity. That's when they're starting to fidget. They tap their hands or feet. They start squirming in their seat. They like to leave their seat in situations where it should be common for them to just sit still. They run around, climb on things where it's inappropriate, and they're unable to play or engage in leisure activities quietly. They need to move around. It's often on the go or seen as kind of like driven by a motor. They like to talk excessively, and that's one reason why sometimes they they can be confused with somebody who has NPD because talking a lot, the narcissists love to talk about themselves, but they can blurt out answers before the question has even been completed. And they can have a difficulty waiting for their turn, their turn, and they don't want to forget what they're trying to say. So they will blurt it out. And some people see it like the narcissist who the narcissist interrupts. So uh, that can be confusing. So, you know, how, how do we diagnose this? So there can be a clinical interview. The healthcare provider conducts a detailed interview with the patient. And often, if possible, they'll talk to teachers or family members, and they go through a history of the patient's behaviors and symptoms. They can use direct observation, such as in the home or at work. They also have rating scales and questionnaires. They have a standardized ADHD rating uh, scale or questionnaire, the Connors rating scales, the ADHD rating scale um, for, uh, they're often used to quantify the severity of symptoms, gather information from multiple sources. It can also be medical examination. So it's not confused with some underlying problems such as a thyroid disorder, sleep disorder, vision or hearing impairments. And they also assess for comorbid conditions, things that go alongside with it. So people that have ADHD, it's common for them to have coexisting conditions. Sometimes it can be a learning disability, anxiety, depression, or even conduct disorders. So these comorbidities, they need to be addressed and identified. So there is a diagnostic uh, criteria that is in the DSM-5, and that stands for the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. We're currently in the fifth edition. And according to the DSM-5, there are several symptoms that must be present before the age 12. And we'll talk about, can you get diagnosed what, uh, as an adult? And because I want to do this because there are, it seems like on the rise to where more and more people are 
coming out in, in their adult life. And, you know, if you can get to the core of what's going on with your struggles, it can be extremely helpful. And sometimes just a relief, like now I understand. So what kind of treatment? They do have different treatments. Um, but there's there's late diagnosis and symptoms so it, it'll present later on in life and recognizing these some individuals they might not recognize or understand that this is related to adhd until later in their life they may have developed coping strategies and they start masking so people don't really realize what's going on with them and uh, because they're masking so much they are kind of in a denial sometimes and there's also changing demands as you get older you can have stressors such as managing a job or a household or a relationship, and this can exacerbate the ADHD symptoms, retrospective diagnosis. So later on in life, upon reflection, they start seeing that there's uh, symptoms were present during childhood. They might recall difficulties with attention, feeling hyperactive or impulsive, and that affected them in their schoolwork, social interactions, but sometimes it doesn't get diagnosed until later. So the diagnostic process for adults, when we are diagnosing in adults, they typically conduct a thorough evaluation that includes a detailed history. They want to know about the symptoms, including retrospective assessment of childhood behavior, because a lot of what goes on with um, mental illnesses, mental disorders, relate back to the childhood. And it can involve interviews with family members or past academic records being reviewed to see if there's some kind of pattern. Uh, so there are assessment tools, the ASRS, which is Adult ADHD Self-Reported Scale, evaluation of current symptoms. How is this affecting their daily routine? And to rule out other underlying conditions such as anxiety, depression, CPTSD, learning disabilities. And now there are overlapping behaviors, impulsivity, um, let me rephrase that. ADHD and narcissism can sometimes be confused because of overlapping behaviors and traits. We have to remember we're all narcissistic in some way at some time, which is different than NPD. But the overlapping behaviors, people with ADHD can be impulsive. They can make decisions without considering the consequences, interrupt other people, speaking out of turn. But narcissists, they will often display impulsivity, but it's driven by a desire for immediate gratification or attention. And it can be confused as attention seeking. And that's just their hyperactivity. They're not necessarily trying to draw attention to themselves. They're just trying to kind of deal with what's going on in their brains. But the narcissist, they need that self-esteem boosted, a sense of superiority. And both of them have difficulty in relationships sometimes. So the ADHD stems from inattentiveness. They could be forgetful, uh, the impulsiveness, and it leads to misunderstandings or even just frustration. So it can be difficult sometimes in a relationship. And the same with NPD due to that lack of empathy, manipulation, need for control or dominance. So the underlying cause of uh, the actions are different. So if you're trying to, you know, have a relationship with someone, is somebody willing to um, understand your point of view. Maybe you can make some accommodations, like you don't want to have them forget your lunch meeting. So you can say, hey, can I just remind you, make it a little easy. Sometimes they have time blindness or they forget things. Um, but NPD is a lot of future faking and it is different. Uh, also, somebody with NPD might not like you suggesting that they might think you're talking down to them instead of trying to help them. So the difference between ADHD and narcissism is a lot of it empathy. People that have ADHD, they generally have pretty much normal levels of empathy, but they can express it or struggle to express it with difficulty due to inattention or impulsivity. But narcissists, they, they typically lack it and they don't really understand or care to understand about other people's feelings. If somebody has ADHD, they can experience 
low self-esteem often due to chronic struggles with attention, organization, task completion, maybe feeling like they're not good enough. Narcissists, they have that inflated sense of self-importance and it's like a false sense of self-importance. They have to maintain a certain level and deep inside, they know that they're not at that level. So they need others to boost them up and they will go to great lengths because unless they get that validation, they will crash and they don't like who they truly are. So they're going off of a facade. Now the root causes ADHD is neurodevelopmental disorder with genetic and neurological underpinnings. Narcissists uh, with NPD, it's a personality disorder linked to early childhood experiences, whether it's excessive pampering, extreme criticism, that leads to maladaptive self-perception, which in turn relates to how their behaviors are difficult. Uh, so there are differences in the diagnosis for ADHD. You got your clinical interviews, behavioral assessments, standardized questionnaires, and that focuses on the attention, hyperactivity, impulsivity. But if you're trying to figure out if somebody is a narcissist, you got the clinical interviews that assess personality traits, patterns of behavior, and interpersonal functioning. So they are focusing on something different. Um, treatment. So with a combination of medication um, or behavioral therapy, such as cognitive behavioral therapy and organizational skill training, ADHD can be managed a lot easier. Uh, there are no cures for narcissism. The only medication that they would use for that is underlying comorbidities, such as anxiety or depression or whatever else they might be going through. But they also use the CBT, uh, Cognitive Behavioral Therapy. If any of you have used that, let me know your experience with that. But narcissists also focus on understanding and modifying the dysfunctional personality traits. So uh, managing it, you know, if you have ADHD, uh, there are some people that use medication. I know as a teacher, I had some students that, really reacted well um, to where uh, it was like 1045. And also I'm like, what's going on with this class? Yeah, I got a lot of kids acting out. And it was like every day at this time. And their medication schedule was 11 o'clock a.m. And it was almost like I didn't even have to set a reminder. Their behaviors would show them reacting. Um, definitely don't want to overprescribe. Um, you know, there are contraindications, maybe some side effects. So um, use it sparingly. I, I don't think uh, everybody with ADHD necessarily needs but there's also non-stimulant medications um, can uh, be effective sometimes. But behavioral therapy, you got that CBT and it helps cope with the challenges. Behavior modification, certain different techniques that encourage positive behaviors and reduce the negative behaviors through reinforcement strategies. Reinforcement is really important. It is very effective. Uh, depends on how you use it. And if you guys would like to know more how to use it, let me know. And also educational and organizational support. Uh, in the schools, we have IEPs or 504 plans. And that's in the school setting. And it provides accommodations and these supports that are tailored to the student's needs. It's a really good thing. If your kid is struggling, you might want to talk to the school about that. The teachers must follow it. It's not something that they can just decide if they want to follow it or not. It is state mandated, at least in Michigan where I am. Also organizational tools. If somebody has, you know, a, a planner or an app or reminders, and that can help manage tasks and responsibilities. Also lifestyle changes. If you have routine and structure, it's almost like not as easy to forget something that happens every day. You got to develop that habit. Um, and keep it consistent, healthy lifestyle. When you regularly exercise or eat a balanced diet, a sufficient sleep really is important. Also psychoeducation, um, understanding, you know, uh, families, how to understand the conditions, its effects. And 
it, it's something that can be managed. Uh, also support groups. If you participate in these groups, it can provide a sense of community where it doesn't feel so alone. So it can present itself in, in different ways. Uh, in children, they have inattention. They can often frequently make the mistakes or have difficulty sustaining attention. They seem not to listen to, to people when they're talking or they fail to follow through, difficulty organizing. So, um, you know, you can see them fidgeting or uh, talking excessively, blurting out answers. In adolescence, they start to struggle to focus on their long-term projects and they shift from one uncompleted task to another. So if your kid's be bopping around between the different subjects, never finishing an assignment, uh, also they start to avoid or delay starting these tasks. And it just takes too much mental uh, effort. So maybe they like body doubles where somebody's just sitting with them. It gives them a little bit of comfort. It helps keep them on task. Um, so in adults, you can still have that inattention. Difficulty prioritizing tasks, managing time effectively, leading to missed deadlines and disorganization. So that's why it is important to focus on how do we get through this? How can we cope with it? Because it can you know, cost you a job sometimes uh, unless you develop these strategies. So also in adults, I frequently start and stop projects or struggle to maintain focus during meetings, conversations, or readings. And, and, and they have to uh, use mental effort to stay focused. And um, it, it's important to, you know, cope with it. So now there are perceptions of selfishness People with ADHD, they can seem uninterested or inattentive when others are speaking. They might have a good heart. They're just, uh, the ADHD is kind of inhibiting them from having a good relationship. So their minds can wander. They can be easily distracted and they can have a hard time focusing on the conversation, even if they care deeply about the person speaking. So if it is somebody with ADHD and it seems like they're not paying attention, it's not because they care, don't care. It's because um, their, their mind is going so many different ways. So impulsivity, uh, that can present itself in interrupting others, making decisions quickly without considering the impact on others. And that can be perceived as selfish. But the reality is these are just often driven by a lack of self-regulation, not by a lack of consideration or empathy. Now, a lot of people think that they are purposely forgetting important dates, tasks, commitments, and it's seen as inconsiderate. But the reality, it's just a symptom of their ADHD, not a reflection on how they feel about someone. They also have perceptions of lying and they can have... Um, inconsistent stories or they can forget details and people will start to see that as dishonesty and they're not trying to lie but uh sometimes uh the time order too doesn't quite make sense and that's because they're just pulling information and quickly giving it to you uh it's just that disorganized thinking poor memory and it's unintentional con uh, inconsistencies so they also have impulsive statements or promises that they can't keep. Um, so that can be seen as lying, but they may genuinely intend to keep these promises at the moment, but later they struggle to follow through. And that's part of the ADHD symptoms. But empathy, people with ADHD typically have normal levels of empathy. They care about other people's feelings, but they can struggle to express it. Uh, their intent, they may come across as selfish or dishonest, and this is usually not inten intentional. They're manifestations of these problems with managing ADHD. So it's important to educate yourself, uh, therapy, support. I do one-on-ones um, to kind of help. Or if you guys have any questions, I love to do videos for you guys. Hope it was helpful. Let me know what other mental illnesses or disorders you guys would like to know more about. And I'll do some videos for you guys. Please like and subscribe, share if this will help someone.